Today I want to look at two paintings from the Australian artist Margaret Preston. The first is titled Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and the second the Expulsion. The first one was done in 1950 and the second in 1952. I was deeply touched by these artworks for two reasons. These two works of art were painted in the early 1950s long before our indigenous brothers and sisters were to be counted in the census, formally recognizes them as part of the Australian population. This took place in 1967. I became an Australian citizen in 1965 and I proudly played my small part in the success of this referendum. The second reason is the dramatic contrast that these two paintings make when we look to them next to each other. The first painting is titled Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, 1950. The Garden of Eden is clearly an Australian landscape with plenty of Australian flora and fauna. Who was habited this land long before the colonizers arrived were our indigenous brothers and sisters, and so Adam and Eve are Aboriginal. With this painting, Margaret Preston powerfully captures the holistic spirituality, the culture that links the dreaming with the land and the totem of our first Australian. The Uluru Statement clearly states our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander tribes were the first sovereign nations of the Australian continent and its adjacent islands and possess it under our own laws and customs. This our ancestors did according to the reckoning of our culture from the creation according to the common law from time immemorial and according to science more than 60,000 years ago. This sovereignty is spiritual notion, the ancestral tie between the land or Mother Nature and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people who were born therefrom remain attached there too and must one day return thither to be united with our ancestors. This link is the basis of the ownership of the soil or better of sovereignty it has never been ceded or extinguished and coexists with the sovereignty of the crown. The second painting is titled of the Expulsion, 1952. Here Margaret Preston confronts us with the traumatic events of colonization. Margaret Preston makes use of the Genesis story, but in the Genesis story, Adam and Eve had sinned. They gave in to the serpent's temptation. Do you think that you are creating the image and likeness of God? No, you are not, the serpent told them. Eat this and you will be gods in your own right. It was Adam and Eve's pride who made them think that they could do without God and become gods in their own right. But Margaret Preston is confronting us with the realization that our indigenous brothers and sisters did not sin against God, but it was the colonizers who acted like self-appointed gods and banned them from their land, their culture, their spirituality for many generations. Look at the pain on their faces. Look at the child the mother carries in her arm and this child will have to pay the consequences of this intergenerational trauma. And who is expelling them from their land? Who has built a barrier between them and their culture? And who has locked them out of their spiritual landscape? Who has separated them from their spiritual totems? Look at it closely. It is the angel with fair hair and colonizer's features. My dear friends, this is 1952, 15 years before the 1967 census, and Margaret Preston's prophetic vision was already then 
confronting us with the dramatic consequences of colonization. The rest of my reflection is taken from the 2023-2024 social justice statement issued by the Australian bishops titled Listen, Learn, Love, a new engagement with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And I really strongly recommend that you read the document in its entirety. This document provides an excellent example on how to listen, learn and love our Indigenous brothers and sisters, as it states in its foreword. In a spirit of love and of humility, we have chosen to take the unusual step of inviting the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Catholic Council to speak directly in this statement to Catholics in Australia and indeed to all Australians. The aims of this document are outlined in the foreword. One, recounting the impact of loss of land and culture, the experience of racism, the forcible removal of children, high incarceration and suicide rates, alcohol abuse and domestic violence, and poor outcomes in health, employment, housing and education is very painful. However, amidst these challenges, the strength, perseverance and dignity demonstrated by the first Australians offer a glimmer of hope for a future where these injustices are overcome and their voices are heard and are valued, paving the way for a more inclusive and equitable society. The way we in the church and in society address these painful matters must change if there is to be an end to centuries of injustice. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples need to be welcomed from the margins into the centre so that they can lead the discussion about change and implementation of actions to bring about healing and justice. We can be at the forefront of a new era in Australia's public life. As one body in Christ, let us work together, drawing strength from the resilience and wisdom of First Australian by recognising their experiences and collaborating across boundaries. Let us listen and learn intently and love our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander sisters and brothers with great generosity and respect. The pathway forward is summarized in three words. Listen, learn, love. Firstly, listen. And here the document gives us the word of John Lockerlack, the chair of the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island Catholic Council, in which he says, we are not helpless or hopeless. We know how to make programs work for our people. Too often governments have not been able to make things better because they leave us out of the decisions about programs and their implementation. Patrick Dodson, the father of reconciliation, now a senator of Western Australia, made this point strongly and clearly in 1996. The track behind us is littered with the relics of policies, programs and projects that failed, that wasted taxpayers' money, that failed to deliver real outcomes to those crying out for them. They failed mainly because they did not include Indigenous people in making the decisions. Nothing about us without us is a saying which many of us share to emphasize the need for us to be at the decision-making table. To heal this wound, all Australians need to listen to the truth we have to tell about the racism and the many injustices it has caused. Australians at all levels need to acknowledge this original injustice and commit to walk a different track with us to a better future. When this wound begins to heal, we believe all the other problems from poor health to high suicide rates will begin to be fixed. The second pathway is learn, learn from our indigenous sisters and brothers. 
in this section I was touched by the witness that our first Australian Archbishop, John Bede Paulding, gave to the New South Wales Legislative Council in 1845. This, my dear friends, is 178 years ago. At one point in his evidence, he put himself in the place of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people when he declared, I'm making myself a black, putting myself in that position and taking away all that I know except that this is my country, that my father lived by pursuing the emu and the kangaroo, that I'm driven away from my hunting grounds that my children and tribe are suggested to the grossest barbarities. Then he, con he continued, the Aborigine will demand, what right have you to come here? We have not asked you to come, and you take away our lands and drive away our means of subsistence. And then also he says, occupation by force, accompanied by murders, ill treatment, ravishment of their women, in a word to the conviction on their minds that the white man has come for his own advantage without any regard to their rights. My dear friends, these are the words of a prophet. In his 1968 Boyer lecture titled After the Dreaming, Stenner, the speaker, spoke about the great Australian silence. He spoke also about the cult of forgetfulness and reminded us then to listen to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples about their cultures and history and to learn from them can help us to see our national story differently. It can open up new pathways for healing and transformation third pathway is love. Forward together we love. The document says love is at the heart of Jesus' message. The great commandment is to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. This love is characterized by commitment to encounter and dialogue, reciprocity, mutual accompaniment, and a desire to put the other at the center of our attention. In Fratelli Tutti, the document says, Pope Francis reflects on the parable of the Good Samaritan and urges us to be Good Samaritans who bear the pain of other people's troubles rather than fomenting greater hatred and resentment. This is our calling in Australia today. And therefore, the bishops say, in the light of all we have heard and learned from our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander sisters and brothers, we say we love you and commit ourselves to walking alongside you on your struggle for justice.